You help me out, right? I'll help okay. you out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Not Just a Straight Talk. as salam Alinkum. And that is to all my Muslim brothers and sisters and everyone in the nation that is participating in the month of Ramadan. We have been blessed to have a gentleman that has been a pillar of community. He's also a talk show host and he's also Imam. And he's gonna be sharing with us a little bit, a lot of information about Ramadan and what it is, please welcome Brother Hamid, no, Shahid Hamid. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Salam alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. And for the viewers that's listening, say, what are they talking about salam alaikum and lincoln salam? What does salam alaikum mean and lincoln salam? As salam alaikum means peace be unto you. Okay. And this is this is the uh, the mantra. This is the the greeting of over 1.5 billion Muslims worldwide. 1.5 you know? billion. 1.5 billion. Like you, a moment ago, you mentioned that just the, the Muslims in this nation were fasting, but the Muslims around the world are wow. fasting during this time because this is the time in which uh, the Quran was revealed. This, this is uh, when the Quran, the first uh, verses of the Quran was revealed. And this is the time that we uh, uh, use to get ourselves closer to God Okay. Closer to humanity. You mentioned a moment ago about we will never know why those brave men stepped forward to uh, help those uh, sisters on the on, on the Mac train. Yes, sir. And I can tell you why. Okay. It's, it's one of the reasons why, a couple of reasons why is it demonstrates the intrinsic goodness of the human being. Absolutely. What makes a human being running run into a burning house to help save somebody? What right. makes a human being? Uh, gather around and lift a car out of a ravine and so forth. It's, right. It's the basic goodness that 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 uh, God put into the human being, and, okay. and these men uh, demonstrate the best of what the human being is. Yes, they and did. And when you look at uh, Memorial Day, it's significant that this happened on Memorial Day because Memorial Day it demonstrates the that many human beings did the same thing. Absolutely. Fought, fought for freedom, fought for uh, lack of oppression, uh, fought uh, uh, to, to keep the human being free. So uh, those men should be applauded. Absolutely, and, absolutely, absolutely, man. absolutely, yes. And we salute all the veterans, the families that still here, and the ones that put their lives on the line for us, and those heroes again. Uh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, this happened on, on the eve. On the eve of Ramadan. Of Ramadan. Absolutely. Yes. So and let's talk about... Go ahead, sir. No, no. I was going to say, if, uh, if anybody deserves paradise, those gentlemen deserve They're going paradise. To absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Ramadan mm -hmm. and what it means. Okay. Well, the, uh, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, has said that Islam consists of five pillars. Declaration of faith, that there is no God but God, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is not God, but the messenger of God, and prayer is the second pillar of the, of the faith, the, and uh, that we must pray to this, to, this, to this God. Charity, that we must give charity, uh, and and uh, two point five percent of our yearly earnings to help the poor. Oh yes. And fasting, fasting once a year in, in the month of Ramadan to to demonstrate and to get closer to God and to our fellow human beings. And then the final pillar, the final step is Hajj, making a trip to the pilgrimage or a pilgrimage to the house of of God in Mecca, uh, what is now known as Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, God uh, asked us to fast and made fasting obligatory because it, it, is a, it is an opportunity for us to renew our connection with, with Him. With God. And okay. it's, a, it's also an opportunity for us to uh, uh, renew our faith and be, as these gentlemen that we just speaking about uh, did, to, to renew our faith in God to renew our connection in God, to re renew our connection in the human being and with our neighbors, uh, with, with uh, uh, the poor and so forth. We, 
we uh we we fast for uh the the from sun sun up to sundown and uh we uh share share that uh we, when we break the fast we break the fast to uh to help uh again to help us uh get cl uh, closer to god and and to our fellow human beings and uh and and we we uh spend the time in meditation yes we spend time reading the quran okay in fact uh, we read one thirtieth of the quran per night per day and by the time the the the, the, the fast is over which is the the Eid al Fitr when we, when we celebrate fast breaking we would have read the Quran from cover to cover, and, cover to and, cover. and again hmm. that is an effort to renew our connection with Him to renew uh, our knowledge of of our religion right and and to uh, uh, introduce others to uh, uh, what uh, aspects of our religion that they, they may not know about. Now there's a couple of things, I, uh, there's always seems like a myth, mm -hmm. and, and if you will, to kind of clarify it. You mentioned that a lot of people think Muhammad is God mm -hmm. in Islam. Mm -hmm. So could you clear that up? Yes. First, let me say, let, let me say that any Muslim that does not recognize Jesus Okay. Uh, that does not recognize Jesus is not a Muslim. The Quran tells us about uh, Jesus as being one of the mighty, mighty messengers of God, and uh, uh, we just uh, and there's very little difference between there's very little difference between a Muslim and a Christian, but one one aspect we differ with, and that is. We doesn't. We do not recognize Jesus as God incarnate. Right. Okay. He, yes. He, yes. He he was a prophet of God, uh, uh, begotten. I don't know what begotten means, uh, but he he was he, he, he was born to an earthly mother, and uh, and had a miraculous birth, birth. And every Muslim believes that. Okay. Yes. We do not believe that he was crucified, because God says in the Quran. That that they did not crucify him. It was only made to appear so, but he he was saved by God Himself. Uh, okay. So uh, the Muslim recognizes and accepts all the prophets of God, uh, coming from from Adam to Moses to uh, Jesus to Muhammad. To Muhammad, okay. And we uh, recognize and 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 follow them. We do not worship God. Uh, we do not worship them as gods, but we follow them as honorable messengers of God, the last of which is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay, yes, because there's, there's a lot of myth when people say, right. oh, the Muslims, they follow Muhammad, that's their God. So I'm glad you was right. able to right. clarify that. Right. And also, well, you spoke about uh, um, fasting. Fasting, yes. From from dawn to dust? From dawn to, to dust. dust. Yeah. Share a little bit about what fasting is and what it means to people. Fasting, what fasting is, it's again, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to renew our faith and, and also it's a, it's a uh, God says in the Quran, uh, that is Arabic in the Quranic language of, O ye who believe, Fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, oh. so that you may learn self-restraint. Okay. And that, and, and, and imagine if we uh, took this opportunity, took this, if we learn, all of us learn self-restraint. So, and again, it's a process by which God we draw closer to God. It's a process by denying ourselves of food when we can eat, okay. but when we, when we choose not to eat. And uh, again, uh, help, uh, uh, working on that spiritual renewal, uh, the discipline that comes out of denying ourselves food, uh, the discipline that comes out of that uh, helps us in other areas of life. Of the life so yeah. we, we are not to uh, eat, drink, or smoke anything uh, during, that, during that from dusk to dawn. Uh, we, we are to have no sexual uh, contacts of any kind uh, with our lawful wives, 
Uh, from dust to dawn. Yes, from dust okay. to dust to dawn. Because I, I, I would have to put y'all, because I want people to. So <laughs> <laughs> this man told me I can't have sex with my wife. So <laughs> I took from dust well, to dawn. Well, well, 30 days. 30 yeah. days is a good exercise. <laughs> for you. 30 days is a good exercise. Yeah. But uh, also, this fasting is for everybody. It gives everybody a chance to allow their body to cleanse itself. To cleanse itself, yes. absolutely. It cleanse itself. And it's uh, it's a, again a renewal uh, uh, aspect for the, the the mind. It helps me renew our, our thinking process, and as well as our spiritual yes, uh, our spiritual uh, 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 makeup. Right. Now you spoke about charity as one mm -hmm. of the pillars. Mm -hmm. What what does that? You said two two thirds. Two point five. Two point five. Right. What does that? Do for a person, to, for charity. Let me just let me, let me just uh, expand on that. Yes. Uh, charity and God gives us these four pillars, these five pillars, as a, uh, uh, as an institution. He gives us he, he gives us these five pillars, uh, of which one is charity, to help us. And while we're uh, fasting, God wants us to 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 help. To, to know what it feels like to be hungry. Okay. Yes. To know what it feels like. Yes. So, so that, so that, uh, and and the poor uh, has an obligation on us. Okay. Imagine uh, uh, if you have so much money, uh, if you have so much money, like uh, many Christians, it stated. Jesus stated that it's easier for the a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get to heaven. Well, well yes. being rich in Islam is not. It's not. Uh, Islam is not against a person being rich, but you you should spend your money in ways that God says spend it because He gave you He gave you the money. Okay. And one of the ways is the sharing, two point five percent of your wealth, of your total wealth, once a year, and give it to the poor. Give it to the so poor. That the, so that the so that the so that the poor, and the hungry can can uh, can have something to eat. So that's these, powerful. Yeah. They, so this, these exercises, prayer, along with prayer, along with uh, uh, charity, along with uh, fasting, these are a process by which we may, may renew ourselves. Okay. And 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 then like that. Coming in and hearing some of the teachings or the preachings right. or. Well, we have local the, centers and okay. ministries around town. We okay. have some in Beaverton. We have uh, two here, uh, two or three in Northeast. Okay. Uh, I'm with the Muslim Community Center of Portland, and we are on Vancouver and uh, Killingsworth. Uh, they, we we have uh, uh, on 72nd and Northeast Gleason. I believe there's a ministry there. Uh, there's one in Southwest uh, Barber Boulevard, mm -hmm. right off the Capitol Highway. This is Islamic Center of Portland. We have one in uh, 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 Master Bilal in, uh, in Beaverton and so forth. So what they can come and do is, is sit down and listen. Yes. And, and ask uh, for an instruction if they would like to become a Muslim. That's simply, uh, that, that's achieved very simply by stating, uh, coming and declare what is known as the Shahada. Okay. Making a declaration of faith, what what is called the declaration of faith, and you just repeat, uh, I, I bear witness that there is no god but Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. You see, some people do it three times. So some say all you have to do is just to say, say it once, and you you automatically become a Muslim. But after that, then you are obligated to follow the Muslim way, which is five times to pray five times a day, uh, give charity, uh, fast the month of Ramadan and make Hajj to the holy house and the holy precincts in Mecca. I got one question I want to ask before we go. Yes. The word Allah, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Okay, Allah means uh, simply in the Arabic language it means the God. The God, okay. The God, if you, so because one of the things that we kind of frowned upon is using the word God because the God spelled backwards is means dog. Okay. And we and that's a name that's too high for the, for for the creator. Way too high. And, yes. And, yeah. and when you say Allah, that's the God. And when you say and if you turn the the, the, the letters around, La uh, uh, Allah La Ha La Ha means Oh God. Right. So when you say Allah, it's a prayer. It's a prayer. And when you say it in reverse, or when you when, when it's written in reverse, 
or looked at in reverse, it means, oh God. Oh God. Now, what's, uh, we could go on, we're gonna have to have you back, mm, okay. where we could keep educating mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Imam Shaheed Hamid. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Let's give everybody a hand and I have everybody introduce themselves. Yes, 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 yes. And we're going to be sharing a little bit about Ramadan and the myth about Ramadan, what it means to them as Ramadan. We have some young people with us and welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. And for those here in the audience and the viewing audience, please, Imam, share what Assalamu alaikum means. Assalamu alaikum is uh, an Arabic statement. Uh, it means peace be upon you. It is what the Muslims say. Uh, this is how we greet each other uh, every day uh, when we see each other and we greet uh, not only our families and, f and friends, but anyone that is um, receptacle or receptive, pardon me, uh, to that greeting. It means peace. 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 So when here in the audience and those are catching us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that good stuff, when someone says to you, Assalamu alaikum, they are not talking about sh blowing you up. No. You know, well, I want to get the myths out the way. Okay. They're saying peace to you. Yes. Yes. And what would the response to that person? The peace, the response to that would be, Wa alaikum as salam. And that means, and the peace be upon you. So That's each beautiful. person is obligated in that greeting. Uh, the person who extends the greeting obligates the one that they extended the greeting to to return that greeting. That is beautiful. Yes, and it's not just any peace. Yes. It is the peace that only God can give. Oh my it's goodness. actually a prayer. Yes. So that's what we're doing. Yes, okay, let's share a little bit about, uh, we'll go down the line here, please introduce yourself, and then we're gonna share a little bit about Ramadan, okay. and what it means to you, and we're gonna try to share, break something down, some of the myths. Okay. So, uh, who we have here? Saiku Sumawaru. Okay, sir, and? Uh, Fatima, Brother Sinarish. Okay, Salam. Malika, Brother Sinarish. Yes. And I'm Samira, Brother Sinarish, the mother of Fatima and Malika, and oh. the founder and CEO of a local um, organization called Muslim is United. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's welcome each and every one of them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Young people, I'm going to share with you a little bit. As Muslims, share a little bit about what it is like for you each day or every day or some of the things that you have to go through. Well, usually at school, uh -huh. when you say you're fasting, and they're like, oh, do you drink water? And you say no, and they're like, not even water? And it's really annoying when they always say that. Right. It's, it's, it's like, okay. And they say, oh, I feel so sorry for you. And it's like, I chose this. It's not that I'm being forced to do it. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, somebody else want to chime in on that? Well, Ramadan, like... Being a Muslim every day means a lot to me, and I thank Allah every day that I'm a Muslim, and that He chose me to be one of the believers. And it's it's not always easy, but it's still it's still an amazing feeling to be a Muslim and be able to fast and be a part of Muslim communities and just wear a scarf on your head and be able to say I'm a Muslim and I believe in Allah. Okay, now you mentioned the scarf. Please, if you will, share, because a lot of people uh, see the young people or the ladies in, as you refer to scarves, what is the name for and what is the reason for them? Oh, okay, so we call it a uh, hijab in okay. Arabic. And we wear it to cover our heads, to be modest. And um, because Allah told us to cover and be modest in the presence of men who aren't direct relatives. And that's why we go around and we wear scarves. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You want to chime in on that? Did um, no, she prayed. Okay. Now, as a young man, mm. share a little bit about as a young man what it's like being a Muslim, and and you have two sisters. Just sister? yeah. Yes, as Muslims. Being a Muslim is like a really big deal. Okay. And me waking up every single day, and having in mind that <clears throat> I'm a Muslim. Yes. So there's certain things I have to watch out for. There's certain things that I can't do. And it also puts me in a state that, hey, you're a human being, you make mistakes. But also being a Muslim, understand, it's having to understand that 
God will forgive you no matter what. Yes. Whoever believes in God, he will be forgiven. And making mistakes is a part of human nature. And it also, it always like comes to me that you're a Muslim, you make a mistake, you're a human being, but you're a Muslim, you're a believer. So that means, it doesn't mean that you always think, oh, I made a mistake, I'm not perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Right. You, okay. As a human being, you always make a mistake. You always keep in mind that, yeah, as a human being, I'm gonna make a mistake no matter what, but I have to keep going, pushing, pushing, pushing. Right, now and you mentioned some of the things that you have to watch out for. Share a little bit about that. What, what do you mean when you say that? Because I know well, <coughs> the viewing audience, audience here and the viewing audience is wondering, well, what does he mean he have to watch out for? Um, if you was to ask anybody around my age, like if there was to act, if there was somebody was to come to me and ask me, do you smoke? And I'll tell them no. Okay. Do you drink? No. Do you go to clubs? No. Do you hang out with girls? No. And they'll look at me like, right. what's wrong with you? <laughs> you can't have fun? <laughs> right. No, basically I'm, I will respond to them as, I fear God and I'm afraid of what will happen to me if I follow that path. Yes. So yes. I try my best to refrain from anything that will cause harm to my, my future life or anything to my, my present life. Yes, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's, okay, now Islam has five pillars. Yes. Who would like to touch on the five pillars of Islam? Mm -hmm. I think Samira would be. Samira? Yes. Salaam alaikum. Samira. Alaikum salam. Yes. So there's the, the proud mother of all these young people. No, beautiful. no, this, this is, this, this brother is not the biological brother of the two young ladies. Oh, well, okay, okay, okay. He's a Muslim brother, He's Muslim but brother, not but the, the biological. Ladies brother. Are. Yes. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, yes. So we have um, five pillars that are um, the, our prayer, our daily prayer that we need to, we make the salat five times a day. Um, we have the requirement of going to Hajj, if so, if we're fina financially able to, we need to make the pilgrimage to Mecca and Hajj and fulfill our duty. Okay. Um, we have the requirement of fasting, um, and that's what we're doing right now in Ramadan. And we're, it's incumbent upon Muslims to fast the month of Ramadan. There are different reasons that um, a Muslim wouldn't have to, but, there, but basically if you're capable and able, you need to fast this, the month of Ramadan. And what are the, the last two? Fatima Malika. Charity, and the first one is oh. belief in God. Oh, I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. First uh -huh. one would uh, be Shahada, which is belief, the in belief in God, like stating that you believe in God. Yeah. And then the other one would be Zakat, which is charity in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And that means that you, if you're able to, you give what you can to people who are in need of it. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard the word Salat. So for our viewing audience here and those in social media land, what does Salat mean? It means so prayer. Prayer. prayer, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's five times, how many times a day that you, you pray? We pray five times a day. Okay. So what, there's Fajr, at, which means dawn. Okay. We pray at dawn and then there's um, the hood, which is uh, in the morning, noon. Okay. noon. And then there's Asr, which is in the afternoon. Okay. And then there's Maghrib, which is at sunset. And then there's Aisha, which is at like, yeah, at night. At night. Okay. And then Ramadan, we have um, the Tarawi, which is ab actually um, optional, but it's, you know, it's a, a sunnah. So we, we pray Tarawi in the night. And there's other prayers that we can do, but there's five official prayers that we do throughout the year. But there's other, there's a Safi and Witter and... Um, Tarawi and other and Sunnah prayers that we can also pray. So there's more prayers, but there's five official ones. Okay, five that are mandatory. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Let's say five that are mandatory. Okay. And uh, to, to clarify, th these prayers are uh, stated and they're demonstrated or participated in at stated times throughout the day. Um, prayer is uh, preferable, okay. preferable in congregation and in a mosque but can be said at home or anywhere you are actually. Um, and there's a process, a ritual of preparation prior to prayer, okay. uh, which is called wudu, where there's the washing of, of uh, body parts, uh, the hands, the face, the head, uh, the mouth, the nose, and the wiping of the feet. Uh, so there's a purification process that takes place prior to prayer. And the most important part for the prayer is to state one's intention to state one's intention that you actually intend to make this prayer as a requirement 
upon you as a believer because God has required that we stop in intervals throughout the day, put all other things to side, right. and to remember him, to worship him, and to bring ourselves, our souls, and our consciousness back to center so that we understand that where we are is because God has placed us there and that at any moment we may be departing. So when we pray, we pray as though that prayer that we're praying is the last prayer that we will ever get to say. Oh my goodness, so we stop yes. throughout the day and we make this prayer. And particularly the, the Salat al-Wusta or the Asa prayer, which is in the midday at a time when people are the busiest, right. the busiest, we stop and we make that prayer. And uh, uh, the prayers are in series of uh, prostrations. Uh, the early morning prayer, uh, the prostration requirements are two. Okay. Sajda, or putting the head to the floor, as Christ put his head to the floor. Okay. Uh, we put our heads to the floor. In the afternoon, the prayers are four in number, where we make the full number of uh, prostrations. And then in the uh, late afternoon, the Asa prayer, again, four. And in the evening, it's three. And then in the night prayer, it's four again. And all these prayers have different components to them. And, uh, and the, the main thing in the prayer is that we say, in that prayer, the most uh, recited verse of the Quran, and that is the Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the opening chapter of the Quran. And if that prayer is that, or those words are not recited, then the prayer itself is, is not valid. Um, and, and those words are? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَقْذُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلِلْضَالِينَ آمين. That's beautiful. Yes. Now, in English, what, what does that mean? What, what are you saying so people understand? With it? God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, praise be to God, the Lord and cherish of all the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, mm. master of the day of judgment, you alone do we worship and your aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those upon whom you have bestowed your favor, those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. Oh my that is what it said. Yeah. And that is said as a foundational statement or a recitation in all of the prayers, in all of the prayers. And I want to jump back a little bit. Don't want to yeah. take over the show. But no, no, no. Uh, you're, not like the, uh, <laughs> you're here to inform us. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, yes. I want to jump back a little bit to, to, to the month of Ramadan. Because we have a saying straight talk. Yeah. It's by us for us. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and you hear us say Alhamdulillah a yeah. lot. That means okay. praise be to God. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Praise be to God. Uh, in the, the Ramadan is one of the requirements upon every Muslim uh, that is of age, that is of, um, have reached the age of puberty. Uh, there's a requirement to fast. If that person is one at home in their home environment they're not traveling outside of their their normal domain uh, if they are not ill if you're sick or on a journey you don't have to fast okay. you can make it up through other means uh, if you're traveling you can make it up days later if you're ill you there's uh, provisions that allow you to feed people so god has left no one out right. uh, but the fasting requirement is a rigorous requirement where the things that are normally lawful to us and accessible to us, we bring ourselves uh, in submission to God and we sacrifice the things that are, that are normally lawful for the sake of God. So eating is lawful, right. drinking is lawful, uh, uh, engaging carnally with a lawful, in a marriage relationship, right. those things are all lawful. But during the daylight hours, from the time that it is distinguishable between the the night and the day. This is when, the, when you can distinguish the white thread of day from the black thread of night, begin your fasting. Begin your fast, okay. Now, all people fast, all religious fast. communities have some element of fasting. Right. What makes our fast specifically and uniquely different is what is called the sahur, is the early morning meal. Okay. And you'll find Muslims up all over the place uh, yeah. uh, eating, eating, something eating. Eat. Okay. yes, okay. early in the morning, yeah. uh, taking in sustenance, uh, not big meals, it's, it's up to the individual, but most right. of the time you don't want to eat a lot of food because you've already eaten the night before. And we, we have that suhoor, and in that is, is the Prophet Muhammad, the peace be so upon him, seven. said that in that meal is a blessing, and that is what is unique to us as Muslims, that we take that meal, and then 
from that point, after the, the prayer is called and before the sun is even seen on any horizon, we start the fasting process and that process means that we don't eat, we don't drink, we don't ingest anything into our bodies whatsoever. Uh -huh. And more than that, we are under strict requirements to manage and, uh, and govern our thinking and our behavior and our, uh, uh, our energy, if you will. We are to be God conscious, Right. God okay. conscious. So when we're out in the world working around folks and, and, and people are doing what they're doing, right. uh, what uh, the blessing is for the fasting person is the mental muscle and the spiritual muscle gets really strong because you begin to ignore things. You've heard the statement where people say, I'm in the world, but not of it. Right. This is true absolutely during the month of Ramadan. You're in the world, but not right. of it. That's what this young man yes, was referring absolutely. to, not getting uh, sidetracked. Not getting basically. sidetracked. And I want to ask. Absolutely. Can I chime in, actually, because oh, you mentioned the, absolutely. some That's of the what we caveats share. for fasting. So yes. for women, you're yes. also not required to fast when you are menstruating. If okay. you are breastfeeding or if you're pregnant, those are also right. a lot of mercy to us. So, you know, yes, and we talk right. about kids. So you're talking about work when kids mm -hmm. are going to school. Yes. And the brother was talking about things you have to look out for. Yes. And you're talking, you're mentioning how uh, prayer makes us mindful of Allah. It's really important for the kids to be able to pray and have their space to pray yes, in the schools yes. to help keep them on the track. So I think one thing I've noticed with my daughters is that challenge to get up and leave class and make their prayer because yes. when we're fasting in Ramadan, if we're not praying, our prayers, I mean, our fast is not accepted. So it's really incumbent and important for us, you know, just to give that other side to, oh, yeah, absolutely. to, absolutely. to meet yes. our requirements and to get in there and pray. And it's important that schools understand and, and, and make the space for our kids and youth to, to be able to pray and feel comfortable. Because I know it's awkward, like some Muslim kids are the only Muslim kid in the in the school or in the class and then they're praying by themselves so it's it's good when they have someone with them or if they know the other kids i think this show is important if other kids are saying they know that Absolutely. other kids are going through the same thing where they're trying to get up for sahur at 3 30 mm -hmm. and then pop back up at you know 5 36 7 or whatever to oh, to go to school and they're exhausted in class and they have to take exams i mean i think it's a really big challenge for our youth. So I just want to jump in and throw, add that to what Thank you were saying. Thank you. Well, that's okay. Alhamdulillah. That's, that's, yeah, that's beautiful. That's right. Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yes, praise to God. Yes, yes. Right. And, and I want to ask the young ladies, uh, <laughs> your mother just spoke about that. What is that like for young ladies at school and uh, stopping and going and do your prayer? How is that received? It? Start. Either, sure. Both of you can chime in. Well, um, so it's kind of hard because in, in middle school, it's like when like all the work starts to pile up and then like you have to like stay there and like listen so that you don't not not hear what the teacher says and miss some work and then you don't remember that for like an exam or test and then okay. you like get a bad grade Which but is required yeah. yeah yeah and um so that when you go pray you're kind of like asking Allah for like help and to like make it through school and also yes um like everyone's gonna ask like oh where'd you go and like in school no one can keep their nose out of everyone's business and <laughs> <laughs> they want to know they want to know but that's okay that's a that's an opportunity what they call it that's a teachable moment teachable. later yeah that's a teachable that's moment that's true yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, Brother Tony, they didn't say it, but these are two world-class soccer players. Yes. And they're mm -hmm. engaged in sports throughout the month of Ramadan oh, as yes. well. They, they don't uh, abate their responsibilities and activities. So they need to talk about that we, a little we're bit. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Did you want to chime in a little bit more of what that's like for you to do in the classroom? And then we're going to talk a little bit about the soccer, too. But what's that like for you, being able to step away from the class, keep all that information, and go do your prayers? Well, um it's been kind of difficult because mm -hmm. I feel like it's a problem like in public schools where you don't have a specific space where you can go pray and just leave the class and not have anyone question you about where you're going or, or the teachers stop you and ask you wait why are you leaving class this time it it's kind of tough because you you're trying to fulfill your, your religious duties at the same time, you gotta be in class and understand what's being said, and get your homework and get good grades. And it's kind of tough because you need to have people understand 
what you're doing before you go do it, kind of. And it's it's just extra work to have to go email teachers and let them know I'm gonna be praying at 1:30 today, 1:31 tomorrow, 1:32 the next day, and it's it's kind of tough just right. to now, do you to find deal with the that. Teachers are kind of understanding. Um, at times they can be, okay. but right. definitely a couple times I've had to like let my teacher know, hey, I'm going to go pray, and yes. it kind of interrupts the classroom, mm -hmm. and then people are like staring, like, oh my gosh, who's leaving the class? What's going on? And right. It's, it's kind of. It's like a spectacle, and it shouldn't yeah. be. It should just be part of because there's enough Muslims at the school that. Right. That I don't. The brother has the same situation with his school. Or. Did you go through the same? Situation? Oh, in high school, I kind of went through the same thing. Okay. So you're in college now? Yeah, I'm in college okay. now. Okay. So in college, there's, there's a lot more students who are Muslim. We all pray together. But in high school, I had to leave class at a certain time, and I was like the only one at that time. Okay. That would go and pray, and this. Being the only one, it's not, it's not a big deal for me. Right. But being a Muslim in high school and most of the people there are non-Muslim, right. it makes it kind of, makes you feel like it's strange. Like, right. I don't want to get up and go pray because people are going to make fun of me. Oh. They're going to look at me in a certain way. Gotcha. But being a strong Muslim in high school was very something I really appreciated. And I didn't really start becoming strong until I was like, towards my sophomore, junior year's high school. Mm -hmm. But before that, I wasn't like practicing because people made it seem like, Oh, why are you doing this? It's a strange thing. Don't be strange. Be like everyone else. But me taking a step out of that, that, that boundary and becoming someone that people don't like really um, look up, like come to a lot and right. talk to, it made me feel really different and really good about it. I would have peace in mind and heart. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, yeah. So it was kind of like a peer pressure yes, at times. Yes, it was yes. a peer pressure at times. Yes. Was, was you sisters feeling the same way to kind of peer pressure sometime in the school? Were you? Kind of. Sometime? Yeah. Yeah, sometime. And I, I want to ask more because we'll get to the soccer. How do you share with your peers that you're with every day about Islam and what you have to do and how important it is to you? Well, that every day, I kind of, I got to explain new things to people all the That's time. That's beautiful, yes. So, yes. like, people ask me, I think people try and be like, they're trying to like learn things and be like educated on this kind of stuff. But sometimes it gets tiresome like just walk down the hallway and be like, oh, so do you, um, wear, do you wear your scarf to sleep or something? Right. I'm like, no, I don't. Right. I, <laughs> I take it off. <laughs> right. What, what, uh, what are some of the most frequent questions that you can just share with the audience here in social media that you get that you can just give an understanding of it today? Well, a lot of times people ask me, well, this one's not really, they just ask me, like, do you have one for soccer, and one for, like, regular day use? Yeah. And sometimes people ask me, how many colors, different colors do you have? <laughs> and um, yeah. definitely they ask me if I sleep with it. Uh -huh. They ask me if I shower with it. Okay. And um, they ask me if I have any hair. Okay. <laughs> and right. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Those are all teachable moments, though. My goodness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about this. Did you want to chime in? Yeah, we totally yeah. Voldemort behind our scarves. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about this soccer because that's awesome. We have some professional athletes that's doing Ramadan, and, but we have you ladies here today. And you're doing Ramadan and you're soccer players. How did you get involved with soccer? And how is it going through Ramadan? Oh, um, <laughs> my dad taught me how to play soccer. Okay, um, okay. He, we have family in Morocco. His family, oh they'd play soccer. That's all they do. There's no other sport that exists there. Uh -huh. It's soccer. And um, my dad, when I was, before I could walk, he used to swim me at a soccer ball. And oh my goodness. From <laughs> then on, I just, I would play soccer. My mom signed me up for all, for rec soccer. And then I kind of, when mom noticed how good I was, she was like, okay, move it to the next level. So I went okay. to club. And then I just slowly, kind of gradually went into it. Okay. Yeah. You, you play soccer as well? Yes. Okay, okay. A, well, same thing happened with me. My, our dad sw swung us at the ball when we were little kids, and I remember my mom signed me up for kick and chase. Okay. And 
I was there and I was like towering over everyone because I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> tall. Because then... you're right. only 11. She's only 11. But she's oh my goodness, yes. yes. And then um, I remember I was like scoring all the go goals in this one tournament. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then... So this is your second year fasting and this is your third or fourth year fasting while they're... Doing soccer. Yeah, so that's been a challenge. And, oh, yes. You know, trying to... Um, mm -hmm. I'm watching the kids and making okay. sure that they're okay. But I mean, there's some concern because you know, athletes that are really pushing they sometimes they collapse and right. you know so sometimes I'm worried and sometimes the other parents are kind of like they're not having water and that kind of thing and right. so I, I always left it up to them to be as a choice okay. but they really I mean I, f I feel like you know it builds that discipline like your mom Shabazz was mentioning and the brothers mentioning that discipline today the spiritual discipline also when you're pushing yourself and you just want to have that water. But it kind of, I, I feel like I've seen it make them stronger. And their coaches, it's been a Dawa opportunity. Their coaches have learned about Ramadan oh, and show yes. a lot of respect to them, you know, for fasting. And I mean, I'm like, you know, you know that's our duty that we fast. Right. So it's kind of balancing that, you know, humility. That's our duty. And all the Muslims are doing, all these kids are fasting. It's not just athletes or something, but it does, you know, you, you do get kind of highlighted when you're around the non-Muslims and you're fasting. And they're like, wow, you're just how old and you're fasting? So it's wow. that challenge to stay humble, stay fit, and make, and healthy, too. Now, mm -hmm. also, you have a book called the Quran. Is there required readings that you have to do during the month of Ramadan? It's not required, okay. but it's like you, you should, like, learn how to read the Quran and learn Arabic and... It might be the Sunnah, Imam Shabazz. Yeah. Is actually, it the Sunnah to, to read the whole Quran? Actually, it is. It is, yeah. it is really required. Yeah. It is required to read oh, one thirtieth mm -hmm. of the Quran each day, each day, and to read it to its entirety before the month is completed. Within so the thirty days. Within you the have thirty read days. Okay. Yeah. So if okay. you break it down into a thirtieth, you'll read it one thirtieth okay. each day, and it's also recited at night in the in the prayers that uh, Sister Samira mentioned earlier, the Tarawi prayers. In our prayers we're actually reciting the Qur'an. Okay. That, is, that is our prayers, except for special prayers we may say for now, our Now, when you break it down, those yes. are broke down as surahs? Surahs, yes. Surahs. yes. Which is yes. verses? A surah, a, yes, a surah is a, is a verse, and an ayah is uh, one letter, okay. uh, but it, the, a, each surah. So you read these verses throughout, and the sections is called the juz, is one thirtieth, each Jews is a thirtieth. Okay. And you can go right through the Quran. And you but read the whole Quran. Yes, you read the, the Quran because the yeah. the focus of the month of Ramadan is the Quran. Okay. Is the Quran. Uh, the guidance of God, the reminder that God is one, the reminder that life is is uh, temporary, the reminder that there is a day of judgment coming, right. the reminder that there is but one God, the reminder that, that we will be uh, raised up again. So and this is linking us in this reminder uh, to all of the reminders that have been ever given to man since Adam right. because all of the prophets believed in the same fundamental or gave the same fundamental message one God one humanity accountability resurrection li life after death that there is judgment to come so yes and the, and the faith the belief faith believing in God that we don't see Right, Believing right. in God that we don't see, but yet willing to adhere to all of the requirements because of our love and, and uh, desire to please the God that we cannot see. And on that note, if each one of you could just share a little bit uh, about Islam or Ramadan with the viewing audience before we close out, we just go down. We we'll start with the ladies, uh, Samir. Is uh, that yes. Right? Okay. Yes. And uh, I got to ask you, what is it like for a mother? to be raising oh. these beautiful young pe ladies. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on mothers to, you know, to kind of create the atmosphere and create the schedule for Ramadan because we need to eat on time and we right. need to get up and make, you know, eat, um, you know, we need to have breakfast on time because if I sleep in and I haven't made breakfast, right. that <laughs> yes. trickles down to the, you know, yes. so it's, I feel like there is a lot. I mean, and the pressure's on fathers too. Okay. And some, some men, yeah. um, like my husband, he's a, he comes home from work and he helps me with the sahur, which is the morning breakfast. Not right. all men do that. So it's, you know, it's a family yes, thing. Yes. But I think as a mother, you do feel that pressure that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's our duty as a Muslim woman to raise our children to be Muslims. That is our number one duty yes. as a Muslim woman, to, a mother, to raise our children to be Muslims. So there is that pressure to, you know, to have your kids reading Quran and staying on the, you know, 
you know, being mindful of their, um, their religion and what they're doing. And I think it does fall upon mothers quite a bit. Like if the kids are acting up, people look over <laughs> right. the mom, right. the mom, right. you know, I mean, yes, and exactly. I mean, then there is definitely some responsibility there, but it's, you know, it's, you know, it's a father too and the community as well. And I wanted to mention that um, Ramadan is the month um, that the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad okay. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. So that's uh, another reason why we do read the Quran. I mean, I think we, we don't put pressure on, you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult uh -huh. um, to, to complete it, but we are supposed to to read our, the Quran daily and you know there's, there's schedules you can find online where people have broken down what you can read each day to get through to, to complete. Some people complete it and read it over again. Oh my goodness. That's you know, so. Okay, and this is Fatum? Is that what I'm right? This is Malika and Malika. Fatima. Uh, Manika? Malika. Malika. Malika? Yes. You want to share a few little words with the audience here and the viewing audience about Ramadan or any, anything you want to share with them, the young people? Um, well, um, since I'm in America and I'm a soccer player, I have a lot of privilege. Okay. And and I'm and since I'm fasting, and other people around the world don't have the privilege and are playing soccer and are fasting, yes. and I, I'm just I'm just really grateful to be having this opportunity, and yes. I hope that other people around the world will someday get their opportunity, but. The Sometimes they just have given up on um, getting it. Okay, mm. Malik, is that right? Fat yeah. Fat Fatima. Am I saying it right? I'm Fatima. Fatima. Yes. Yeah. What would yeah. you like to share with the audience here and the viewing audience about being a Muslim, Ramadan, whatever you would like to share? Um, Encouraging words? Well, kind of the same thing my sister said. Okay. But like, yeah, I feel like we do get a degree of privilege here in America. We play soccer at this high level. We get all this like accolades and like recognition for our skill and stuff. And there's definitely kids like in Morocco, for one, <coughs> who are amazing soccer players, but they'll never get the opportunity that I do, the exposure that I get as a mm -hmm. soccer player. And just if you're Muslim and you are good at something and you think that fasting or wearing a hijab or anything that being a Muslim might like prevent you from doing something you just need to get out there and maintain your deen but also do just continue doing what you do best because you're not any different from anybody else doing anything you're just you got a different belief standard than they, than they do so you just got to get out there and do what you want to do Beautiful. And do it the best you can. Beautiful. Yeah. Is that cool? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. I'm done. You want to share a few, little, few words of encouragement? or? Um, I would say for all the Muslims who are fasting around the world, um, hopefully your fast is accepted, and I hope you guys are having a great Ramadan. And for those who don't know much about Ramadan, and I hope that everyone out there can get more knowledge about how beneficial the Ramadan is, not only to the physical body, yes. but also, not only to the spiritual body, but also to the physical body. And if most of the people around the world who have disease or body problem, if they was to fast, it would decrease whatever they have, heart disease, oh yes. cancer, carn or whatever that is, and also increase your, your um, health, health, uh, health, um, health status. Beautiful, beautiful. Imam? I'd like to moment, wrap it up. Yeah, yes. an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I witness that there is no God but Allah, and I witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And I thank God for the blessing of being a Muslim. And I would say that being Muslim and the Muslims that are fasting are not only beneficial to the community of Muslims, but the community in general. And I want to say also there are Muslims in prison. I do prison work. Yeah, okay. There are Muslims in prison that are fasting every day under very different and extreme conditions, but they're holding on and they're fasting and it is causing change in their lives, which brings means that when they come home, many of them are bringing change to their communities. Beautiful. So we don't want to forget those who yeah, are shut beautiful. out okay. and locked up. And, and I want to say uh, to each and everyone, it's an honor and a pl pl uh, pleasure. And you have the Muslim organization. Uh, Muslim is United, yeah, and it's a local Muslim women's organization. I mean, we serve all women, but it's mm -hmm. focused on Muslim women of color, and we do hikes, some charity events, we do different events, and our website is www.muslimisunitedpdx.com. Thank, yes. 
Thank you so much for having us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Let, let us know straight talk if you want to come back. And, okay. and we're definitely going to follow you before you become big celebrities oh. on that soccer. <laughs> and Watch come back for them. Yes, yeah. yes. Sir. <laughs> and, and, and we'll follow you on your soccer and just be encouraging. And anytime young people want to come back and share something, let us know. Let us know and we'll put it out there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Salaam alaikum to each and every one of you. Wa alaikum as -salam. It's been a pleasure. Again, Brother Imam, Mikhail Shabab, mm -hmm. and the names again, Suku, Seku, Fatuma, Fatima, Fatima, Mal, Malika, Malika, and Samara. Yep, Samira. Yep. Samira. Thank you. Thank you.